Okay, so in this lecture, um, I'm going to talk about a specific cryptographic task called bit commitment. So I want to explain the idea of what bit commitment is, um, and at least at least a, a little story about why it might you might find it useful. I'm going to give possible ways of carrying out bit commitment that clearly are not secure. And then I'm going to explain why combining quantum theory and relativity, and in particular the no cloning theorem and the no summoning theorem that we discussed in the last lecture, um, show that cryptography based on physics gives a completely secure way of implementing this important cryptographic task. So let's, let's start with bit commitment itself. Um, what, is this, what is this task? So cryptographers um, like to personalize um, these little stories. And there are two characters who are quite familiar in cryptographic stories, Alice and Bob. And sometimes Alice and Bob are collaborating and they trust each other completely. But for bit commitment, Alice and Bob, they need to work together, but they do not trust each other. Um, and we need cryptography help them, help them to collaborate despite their mistrust. The problem for Alice and Bob is that they have conflicting needs and conflicting security requirements. Alice, let's say, is somebody who uh, predicts future stock prices uh, for a living. Um, and she wants to sell her predictions to Bob. But first she needs to persuade Bob that she's actually good at what she does. So um, she wants to give him a prediction and let him be able to verify it after the event. Maybe she's predicting today what the stock prices are going to be next week. But she doesn't want to give him to him for free um, because he might he might go away and make make a lot of money um, on this initial prediction. Um, what she really wants to do is to give him it in code, give him it in an encrypted form, uh, so you can, she can break it up. Maybe it's uh, it's a sentence. Uh, IBM stock will be such and such a price on such and such a day next week. She can break that up into into a binary string code, and then she wants to encrypt that bit by bit, so zero by zero or one by one. And she needs a guarantee that her encryption is secure. In other words, that Bob can't read her prediction, can't break the, break the code and read her prediction, unless she gives him something more, unless she gives him a, a key of some sort uh, to decrypt it. Bob has a different worry. Um, Bob's worry is that Alice is trying to fool him, that maybe she's not really predicting anything at all. Maybe she's just giving him a code now that looks looks like a random string of zeros and ones to him. Uh, and she's later going to look at the event, look at IBM stock price. Um, and she's got different ways of decrypting this string that correspond to different possibilities. So after the event, she will decide which key to give him. Um, and it will look as though she predicted what actually happened. But actually, she didn't predict anything at all. She's just, uh, she just set things up so that she can cheat. Um, by choosing her key post hoc. So ideally, they would like perfect security um, f for these, for their guarantees. But there's, there seems to be some sort of tension between these guarantees. You can, you can see how you could do one, perhaps, but then the other one looks rather hard, um, and vice versa. So here's, let's start with a simple illustration of a protocol that clearly isn't secure, but a way of doing bit commitment. Uh, Alice could just write her prediction down on a piece of paper, put it in a safe, spin the combination uh, wheel on the safe so that the safe is locked, hand the safe over to Bob, and now he's got the prediction, but it's inside the safe. So if he doesn't try anything clever, he can't read the prediction. But she can later tell him what the combination is when she wants him to be able to read the prediction. Uh, she's handing over a key. In this case, it's the combination. Bob can use that to open the safe, pick out the piece of paper, and read it. So that's not a terrible protocol. Um, it achieves something. But it doesn't give a, anything like perfect security uh, for various obvious reasons. Bob might be able to break into the safe. Um, there's certainly nothing about the laws of physics that uh, says you can't break into a safe physically. He could drill into it. He might be able to work out what the combination is by playing with the wheel. He might be able to use scanning devices that either tell him what the combination is or tell him directly what's written on the piece of paper inside the safe. Um, and there are subtler worries in the other direction. 
Alice could have put lots of different pieces of paper in the safe along with some tiny little robot. Um, and when and the robot's programmed so that just as Bob opens the uh, safe door, it scurries around and quickly burns or destroys all but one of the bits of paper and Alice Alice is able to send it a signal very quickly so it knows which one to do. Um, they, there could be some sort of jiggery-pokery involving more than one prediction being contained in the safe. So, what we really want, what Alice and Bob in particular really want, um, is a protocol, a way of implementing this task that gives perfect security. And this is what quantum physics together with relativity will allow them. This is some old work of mine, as it turns out. Um, let's look at a space-time diagram and what we can do with polarised light pulses, for example, that will allow us to achieve secure bit commitment. So I want to stress something at the um, start of this discussion of physics-based bit commitment. We now need to think of Alice and Bob not just as single individuals who are in one place, um, but as something more like organisations who have networks um, of agents that they trust in various different places. So you want to think of Alice as a, a company with lots of personnel or maybe even a government with lots of government employees. And then they trust each other. Um, all, the, all, the, all the agents working for Alice are collaborating. They trust each other. That's not, that's not the problem. The problem is that there's this second organisation, uh, which we're going to call Bob. It has another network of agents. They trust each other, all Bob's agents trust each other, but none of Alice's agents can trust any of Bob's and vice versa. So the reason I want to stress that is we're going to need agents set up at different points in space um, on this diagram. So we're going to start at this point P, and remember again, space goes horizontally, and we're simplifying by thinking of space as one-dimensional here. Time goes vertically up the diagram. So we start at point P, Bob gives Alice a polarised light state, and he knows what polarisation it was, but she doesn't. Now, we're going to focus on just a single bit, a zero or a one. Obviously you can do this many times if you want to commit to many bits, and so uh, commit to a message. But let's just focus um, on the single bit case here. What Alice is supposed to do, according to this, um, this scheme, is send what the state that Bob gives her at the speed of light. Well, okay, it's a light state, so that's, that's perfectly possible. Um, along a definite direction, either on a, the rate to the left, and she does that if she wants to commit to the value zero for the bit, or along the rate to the right if she wants to commit to the value one. And then to prove what she was committed to, so Suppose, let's suppose she committed to zero. To prove that she was committed to zero, she, and now this, this means a different agent of Alice. So Al, the, Al, the agent of Alice who was sitting at the point P stays at that point in space, but there's another agent that she sent it to, who's here at this point Q0. Um, that agent returns the state to a nearby agent to Bob's. Again, this is different from the one who supplied the state at P. Uh, so she doesn't do anything with the polarised light, except send it in a definite direction, and then give it back to Bob. And, it, and if she committed to zero, and now she wants to persuade Bob that she was committed to zero, she just gives him back at this point, Q0. And if instead she was committed to one, and she wants to persuade Bob that she was committed to one, she returns the state to him at this point, Q1. In other words, she sends it in a different direction and gives it back at a different place. Okay, so now let's remember what we've learnt about the constraints on what you can do with information that come from relativity. You can't send any information faster than the speed of light. And from quantum theory, the no-cloning theorem told us you can't reliably copy an unknown quantum state. Um, both of these apply to Alice's situation here. She's given an unknown polarised state of light. She can't send information faster than light, so for instance, Although she can send it from P to Q0, if it turns out that she changes her mind, she committed to zero, but she wants to now cheat um, and unveil one, she'd really like to be able to send it from Q0 to Q1, but that would be going faster than light. These light rays bound 
um, the speed at which you can send information. So she can't send it from Q0 to Q1. She can't cheat by committing to 0 and then, unv um, then unveiling 1. Another way that she might like to cheat is to take what Bob gives her and make two copies of it. Send one of them to Q0 and another one to Q1 and then decide either at Q0 or at Q1 which one to return. So she, if she could do that, she could pretend to be committed. She doesn't tell Bob that she's made a copy, um, but actually not be committed until, until later and then she can unveil whichever one she likes. Uh, but the no claiming theorem tells us that you can't do that. She can't do that. And with a little more work, you can prove not only that she can't cheat in either of two ways I've just described, but there's nothing she can do, nothing she can do with the quantum information that allows her to cheat on this protocol. If she, uh, she really has to choose a commitment in advance if she's going to be able to unveil that commitment later. And so we have what we were looking for. Um, we have a, a rigorous proof based actually on very simple principles of quantum theory relativity, um, showing that there's perfect security. There is no way that Alice can cheat in this protocol. She really has to commit in advance and she can only unveil, she can only decrypt what she was originally committed to. You might worry whether, about whether Bob can cheat, but actually Bob, Bob has no cheating options available to him. He hands over something to Alice. She can send it along channels that she controls, so Bob can't, look, can't interfere, Bob can't look at them. And then she returns it to him, and at that point the, the, the scheme is over, um, and so there's uh, nothing that Bob can do. He's, he's supposed to get the information at that point, uh, so there's, there's, it doesn't make even sense to say that he could cheat at this point. So it's perfectly secure against Alice, but it's also perfectly secure against Bob. Um, and you need both relativity and quantum theory to have a bit commitment protocol that's perfectly secure. That's um, actually a, an, another rather interesting result. We can prove that you cannot use quantum theory alone without the properties of relativity in order to have a perfectly secure bit commitment protocol. Uh, and this turns out to be not just a theoretically interesting scheme, but a practical scheme. Um, there have been now a series of experiments, uh, starting in 2013 um, with a proof of principle implementation of a secure scheme, um, and developed further so that even long-term storage of secrets, um, in, in the one I'm highlighting here, bit commitment was kept secure for a, for a whole day. Um, which, if you, if you think about light speed and uh, the size of the Earth, is, is actually a very, very long time. Light, remember, takes a 25th of a second to go from antipodal points on Earth, and this experiment was done on Earth. So it need, needs many, many million rounds of bit commitment. But they were able to keep these secure for 24 hours. Uh, and in principle, uh, if you can do it for 24 hours, you can do it indefinitely. So in this, uh, this video, We've been discussing bit commitment. Um, I explained what bit commitment is. Uh, I gave a little cryptographic story about why it might be useful. Uh, I took through at least the, sp the spirit of a scheme that uses both quantum theory and special relativity, but it's a pretty simple scheme that allows perfectly secure bit commitment. Um, and just mentioned at the end that this, this is actually a practical uh, practical technology, not just a theoretical, theoretically nice solution. So in the next video, I want to look at another important application of cryptography, in fact, perhaps the most important one, sending secret messages.